Hello and welcome to Sierra Leone Decides 2023 series, the platform that brings um, some of the leading lights within the electoral landscape to shape the conversation and how the electoral process goes. And today we have the chairman for the political parties regulation commission, lawyer Abdullahi Bangura. Um, thank you for accepting to speak to the nation through us. Thank lawyer you Bangura. for having me. Let, let, let's start off. Um, you've just been reformed as a commission from um, registration to one that is now more empowered to regulate. Now, what necessitated that reform within the landscape? Well, to start with, uh, we have had a lot of recommendations pointing towards uh, strengthening the mandates of uh, the PPRC. Clearly, there were instances when our constituent, the political parties, we are misconducting themselves, and uh, we were handicapped in terms of uh, enforcement powers, and the public was constantly asking, and justifiably so, that uh, what is the PPRC doing? They are constituted to regulate the conduct of these people, and they are misbehaving all over the place. PPRC is not doing anything. So because of those concerns, and uh, also those who came to observe our elections in 2018, ranging from the Qatar Foundation, the UN, OAU, ECOWAS, NEW, all of them, when they went back, they wrote their reports on their findings and uh, where they think that we are needs to do some improvements, I mean, if we want to strengthen our democratic credential. <laughs> and among those recommendations were that the PPRC legal regime needed to be reviewed I mean, and uh, principally to clot us with the enforcement powers we did not have under the old legal regime, and uh, so that we can effectively uh, do what we are paid to do. I mean, supervising, monitoring, and uh, regulating political parties. And uh, it was acting on those recommendations that uh, the commission called a validation conference at uh, Bookfish Hotel for three days. And the validation conference was intended for all of the registered political parties. And uh, they all came, 17 of them. We presented our proposals for an amendment of uh, the old Act, the Political Parties Act mm -hmm. of 20, 2002. They deliberated on those recommendations we presented to them. And uh, at the end of the day, they accepted 37 out of the 42 we presented. And uh, the report of that validation conference is what we submitted to the Minister, Ministry of Justice mm -hmm. as legislative instructions and acting on those, uh, the outcome of that validation conference, they prepared a bill that went through cabinet for their concurrence and eventually to parliament. So that was how we came about the new Political Parties Act number 25 of 2022. Would I be safe now to say that the commission is now fit for purpose, especially as we head to the June pools? Well, we now have the requisite authority to ensure that uh, we should pretend over our constituents as the political parties mm. and to properly contain them where necessary. All right, so just before we get into that, there are still a few things hanging around. Um, very recently also what started when you were appointed as chairman mm -hmm. of the commission. Again, we've, we've seen that going around on social media. Mm -hmm. That um, lawyer Abdullah Bangura is, in fact, is a patron member of the ruling Stallion People's Party. People's Party. So how can he serve as an umpire amongst 17 registered political parties are not do the bidding of the SLPP. Are you a member of the SLPP? I think I've commented on that issue severally in all of the opportunities I've had to interface with the press. And I can categorically again say that I have never, ever in my life registered with any political party. Of course, we all have our sympathies, we all have our allegiances, but uh, to say officially I have personally registered with any political party, no. And uh, it is not only the SLPP card that I now have. Mm. As I speak to you, I think I have about five political party cards. <laughs> when I was uh, doing the APC activities, ranging from the review and revision of their constitution onto their lower level election, depending on which decision I take, the one side and the two devices that we had in that party mm. will give me a card that was given to me by the other side. So I even have APC cards. So mm. they will publish the one they will want to publish right. when it suits them. Yes. So I have several of them mm. that they have given me. Right. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let's get into some of the things happening around. Mm. Um, so that, that's clear. Mm. That, that, and so because you've been accused by, depending on the political um, side, yeah. these politicians stand, mm. there's also this concept of, oh, 
um, the PPRC at this point is killing multi-party democracy. Now, take us through the, the activities of the Political Parties Registration Commission in mediating and, set to, and, and settling disputes between and amongst political parties, both inter, inter and intra. Yeah, we've done quite a lot on that score, and uh, we've handled a number of uh, intra-party uh, uh, scoreboards, particularly, particularly for the two big ones, the APC and the SLPP. I mean, the SLPP, they did their lower-level election some time back, and then when we got the results, we had uh, quite a number of petitions, and we upheld those petitions. And in fact, in their own case, we personally went and redo those elections ourselves, and that did not earn me the friendship of uh, some of them, the leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been facing so many more cities coming from them. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is uh, the leader of that party, at some point, when we are being attacked on the field, he called us. Mm -hmm. The commission and the leadership of the party. And uh, he sent out some admonition to the leadership of his party that, uh, as a commission, we have a work to do. And that we should be allowed to do our job without favoring anybody or doing anybody's bidding. So we had that challenge with the lower level election. Then come their uh, constitution that they were reviewing and revising. I mean, normally when they do that, we publish the drafts in the National Gazette and we invite objections. And quite a number of those objections will come in. And when they do, we will organize the hearings of those objections. And at the end of the day, we come out with a ruling. And sometimes when we do those rulings, those who wanted provisions in that draft that are now being challenged and that we have ruled that they should be expunged from their constitution will come after us. Mm -hmm. So yes, we've done that one for the SLPP. Come the APC. The APC, their own processes, we are not uh, the normal one that we will do as a commission at our own discretion. Most of what we did with them was court ordered. It came from the court and we were instructed. So most of our conduct relating to the activities of uh, the APC was skewed towards complying with the order of the courts or the judgment of the courts. In the revision of their constitution, firstly, we were ordered to go and constitute their national delegate conference. Those aspects of it that we are not constituted then. That's the uh, five members from each constituency, mm -hmm. the women's congress representative, the youth re uh, representative. We needed to constitute those. When there, we had our challenges. Went through all of the 132 constituency, but there were seven of them that we could not do those. Because when we went there, there were violence. Mm. People were fighting all over the place. We suffered a lot of inconvenience and that kind of thing. And I mean, this was time bound. Mm. The courts had given us a specific date within which we had to do those uh, elections. And since they could not allow us to do them in those seven, I personally ask that uh, we come back to Freetown and report to the court that we've done substantially what you have asked us to do, but in seven of those constitutions we could not because people did not allow us. Mm -hmm. So we acted on what we harvested from those uh, elections and we went to McKinney to adopt their constitution. After the adoption of that constitution in McKinney, we came, as usual, we published in the Gazette and we invited objections. And we got a plethora of those objections. Mm. I mean, Dr. Sylvia Blyden alone gave us a 72-page objections, almost on every provision in that constitution. Right. So it was an uphill task. We did our hearings. We called them to our conference room. We were there discussing those areas people were not comfortable with, mm -hmm. the aspect dealing with selection. There, was, there were some aspects of it mm -hmm. that they still wanted to maintain in their mm -hmm. constitution. So we went through what we are supposed to go through, and at the end of the day, we did our ruling. We advised, mm -hmm. please go and expunge this section and that section and make sure you give us a clean copy within certain days. Mm -hmm. Even at that, we had challenge. They went, the... Uh, the leadership sent us what they describe as a clean copy. Mm -hmm. But we needed to be very careful. I instructed my staff and myself. Mm -hmm. I sat in my library for three days going through that clean copy line by line. And mm -hmm. I noticed that most of what we had directed is not inputted. Mm -hmm. So we wrote again and said, no, you've done enough, but you've not done all. Mm -hmm. Do it again and let us see if we can get a clean copy, a cleaner copy. Of course, they complied, but not without us suffering some collateral damage by way of invectives. Mm. Um, Mamad and then align, mm. cost them, and then kind of thing. But our focus is on the general uh, membership of political parties. I know that uh, I'm not a very good bedfellow with the leadership of political parties because I have always taken a central position. Mm. The parties are owned by the ordinary members. So my focus in every dealing I have with them 
is the interest of the ordinary membership of the party. If you want me to compromise that, that is, I mean, normally where I fall foul with them. Mm. I will not take that. Right. So we were able to manage that, and eventually we went to their lower level election. You were following the news. Right. I've been on your medium mm -hmm. severally, respecting certain allegations levied against me. I mean, either side. Right. I mean, the, those who were in authority and wanted to retain authority, I mean, they were accusing me of being weaponized against them and uh, sympathizing with the reformists. Mm -hmm. And the reformists, sometimes I take some action in the interest of the ordinary membership. They will accuse me that I've been bribed 400,000 euros by the, His Excellency, the ex-president. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I did not allow that to stampede me in my work. Mm -hmm. I sat in the middle and I ensured that uh, I tend to the interest of the ordinary membership of the party. At the end of the day, we were able to go through those processes. And even the constitution, they insulted me for mm -hmm. all of them. The final product that came out, they were pre in it, right. that this is the best they have had in their party. Mm -hmm. And even the intra-party elections we conducted, of course, those who lose, they will complain. Mm -hmm. But my focus is, if you say you have say over a political party, go tell it to the ordinary members. Because mm -hmm. when I go to the field, what those that will appear before me as members of those political parties will want is what I will go by. How much of a say do the ordinary members of political parties have? For example, if there is an issue um, the ordinary members do not feel okay or satisfied mm -hmm. with against the leadership. Do they have the power to go to the PPRC to make complaints and the PPRC would act upon those complaints? Oh, yes. I mean, they do have a lot of things, not as much as we as a regulatory body will want. Mm. I mean, because as far as we are concerned, we want the ordinary membership to have an absolute say, even over the leadership of the party. Mm. So, yes, when they have issues, they come to us. Like in the Constitution, if they have objection to any provision, they pet, I mean, they come to us and raise those objections. In their internal democracies, the conduct of their lower level election, if they have issues, they petition to us. And uh, we, we are very, very shift in handling those petitions, particularly the APC, because at the time they were conducting their intra-party elections, I mean, the election circle was almost at an end. Mm -hmm. So we, we are determined. Sometimes I would get up to 200 to 300 mm -hmm. petitions. And we have been able to handle those petitions on record time, mm -hmm. sorry. Sometimes we do those, all of those petitions in three days, and then I will deliver a ruling. And one of the things I have adopted since I took over leadership of that commission, we do not do anything there orally. Everything we do, we put it in writing. Because it's not about those who are there now, who are the elm of things. We want it to stay on record and posterity to judge all of us. Mm. The nature of the job we do, I mean, it's difficult for us to get compliments from the public. Mm. But when you put everything you do in writing, I mean, posterity will read in future, and then they will see whether you were as weaponized as people were claiming, or you were in the central position respecting, I mean, representing the interests of the ordinary membership. That's why all my rulings, from petitions to objections, everything I do in that commission is in writing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's get to, um, cor uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but to my knowledge, there are 14 qualified political parties for the 2023 elections out of the 17 registered. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what were the criteria? What did you look at mm -hmm. to certify those 14 as qualified parties to contest in the elections? Yes, yeah, so far, I mean, as at the time the, we responded to ECSF's letter, because ECSF wrote to us mm. seeking the information, the number of political parties that are registered and those that are functional. Mm. As at the 17th, because we had that letter for over a month, we could not reply because we are after the political parties to do the needful mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to certify them to participate in these elections. We waited and waited and waited. And as the 17th, which was the deadline for political parties to start submitting nominations for uh, local council elections, we could not have deferred that response any further. So we replied on the 17th. As at that time, 13 of them were certified as uh, those that have met the criteria substantially mm. to participate in the elections. Then after that letter, in the evening of that letter, the UNPP came mm. with some of the things they had not done in terms of uh, their audited financial statements mm -hmm. and uh, their asset declaration and liabilities. Mm -hmm. So they came and said, okay, Chairman, sorry, we could not come before you do your reply, but mm -hmm. now we have met this criteria. Can you help us? Mm. So I did another letter to ECSL and updated them that uh, I have sent you 13 certified ones, but now one of them is also met the criteria substantially. 
and therefore we want you to include them. So yes, we have now 14 political mm. parties that we are certified to call. Now coming to the criteria that we are asking about, yes. one, you have to be registered, which all 17 of them were, mm -hmm. because uh, I have always resisted the registry in any political party. If I had gone by the law to the register some of those political parties, a good number of them were in default. Mm. I would have the register substantial number. But uh, I looked at it from the point of view that even if the APC or the SLPP is in default, I mean, for security consideration, I will find it difficult to register them. Because if I attempt, there will be some security implications. implications. So mm. because I could not do it against those two big ones, I find it very unconscionable for me to do it against the small ones just because they don't have the number. So I have resisted any temptation to the register any political party. Instead, I chose to regulate. So as at the date of my letter, all 17 of them were still registered. But we had the functionality aspect of it. Mm. Because the new political parties act also provides that for you to participate in an electoral process, you do not only have to be registered, but you have to be functional. And what fun does functionality mean? Yes, functionality yes. speaks mm -hmm. to a number of things. One, their internal democracy. That's key. Mm. That's the principal chunk that will take most of the percentage we apportion. Mm -hmm. You know, we want political parties to be representative of the wishes and the will of their membership. So the Act provides that each and every one of them should constitute their organs through intra-party elections. Mm -hmm. And that is key. We, we are encouraging all of them to go do those elections, ranging from uh, the world executive to the constituency executive to your district executive, regional and national officers. We wanted all of them to do that. Of course, we were not oblivious of the fact that some of them do not have the numbers and they don't have the strength mm -hmm. to do the award election or constituency executive election in all 446 uh, wards or 132 constituencies. We knew those constraints. So we advise that where you have presence, please go and do those lower level elections mm -hmm. in those places. All we are interested in, we want to see a semblance of the ordinary membership having a say mm. in the constitution of the organs of their party. And at the only level in which the ordinary membership will participate in those process is at the world level. That is where the ordinary membership will vote. So any of them that will skip that level, you will have us to contend with. Mm. You have to go there. If you cannot go everywhere, go to places you have presence. So some did not do. Others did, mm -hmm. after a long of to and fro in between us and them. At the end of the day, we get quite a number that have done that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the other aspect that says, when an election date is pronounced, within 60 days of that pronouncement of that date, all political parties that intend to participate in that election, mm -hmm. in respect of which a date has been pronounced, must submit to the commission their declaration of assets and liabilities. Mm. That is a requirement that you must fulfill for you to participate in an election. Even though that one, the pronouncement has been done over almost a year ago, and it wasn't until I got that letter, and again I wrote to them, to all of the registered political parties, remind them, reminding them of that obligation. And that is when those uh, declarations started trickling in. Mm. So that's another aspect of it. So um, mm -hmm. assets and liabilities, you mean their offices? And their everything? offices, if you have an account, mm -hmm. uh, all of them are supposed to have an account, right. what you have in that account, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect of it is the audited financial statement. That is not an electoral requirement. That is a requirement that they should do every year within the first three months of every year. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to submit to us an audited financial statement of their parties. Mm -hmm. And all of this is geared towards what we call political finance in the work we do. Mm -hmm. Because we as an oversight body, we need to know where these political parties are getting their funds from, who is giving them these monies, what are the purposes for this money, and how these monies are expended. Mm -hmm. Political parties must be accountable to not only their membership, but to even the state. The purpose of that provision is basically to uh, kind of stop the political leadership from mortgaging our country by receiving monies from very unscrupulous, maybe business people, I mean, in the promise of advantage or favors in the event they win power. So we need to know where they are getting those monies and why those monies we are given. Is there an ulterior motive? Are they seeking an advantage the donors? And then also, we need to know if they are not getting those monies from uh, organized uh, crime, 
uh, syndicates, like terrorist groups, mm -hmm. where you will receive those mm -hmm. monies and mm -hmm. then jeopardize the security of the state. All right. Um, stay with me. Um, we'll come to talk about the other important um, areas in this interview just okay. after this break. Okay. All right. Welcome back. This is a Sierra Leone Decides 2023 series where we bring some of the leading light within the electoral landscape to shape and guide the electoral processes as we um, head to the polls in June. And today we have the chairman for the Political Parties Regulation Commission, lawyer Abdullahi Bangura. Now, Lawyer Bangura, we were talking about the criteria that political parties must meet in order to um, be able to contest in the elections. And out of the three parties that did not meet those criteria, one has been audacious enough to call out the PPRC that you are killing um, the aspirations of smaller parties, you are doing the biddings of the ruling SLPP because she feels she is very vocal, she's been very bold to call out in her own description, wrongdoings in the, on, in, in the ruling system. And so they're using you to kill a party. That's Femi Claudius School of the Unity Party. What is the problem? What did she not meet to have allowed her to contest in this election? Yes, uh, before going to Femi on specifics, let me comment generally that uh, if we had gone strictly by the law, only three political parties would have participated in this election because those are the ones that met the criteria fully. That's the APC, SLPP, and NGC. The others, we decided to grade them by percentage because we do not want to constrict the political space. Mm. And therefore, we had a threshold of 50%. If you are 50% compliant, we will certify you as a, a party that is qualified to participate in the elections. Mm. For FEMI, I do not have any reason to act in any way, I mean, uh, especially in our own case. I mean, everything that I've done relating to our party is the same thing that I've done in respect of all other parties. I honestly do not know the quantum of the political landscape that Femi occupies that uh, I will target him. To what end? She does not even occupy a modicum of that space. So I have no reason to target Femi. And uh, the thing about, him, about her, sorry, mm -hmm. she is always chosen to be confrontational and always to be dis disrespectful of the oversight body. She is never actually find reason to comply with any directives we've given to her. She will always have issues and she is always taking a confrontational stance when it comes to the PPRC. To what end, we don't know. And uh, as I said, I am not aware of anything special that uh, we've done to her with the intention of uh, stifling her or her political party. We have no reason to do that. We had our criteria, as I've already explained to you, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the political parties that we dealt with, we had advice. I have done several letters to them in respect of compliance. Even before I got a letter from ECSA requesting to, for that information, I had done those letters over two, three years ago, reminding them of their obligations. Mm -hmm. And they have chosen not to do that. In the case of Femi, the problem we had with her is Femi did not see reason to do our ward and constituency executive elections. He wanted to go direct to district and regional executive elections. And we at the commission, our focus is on the ward. We are interested in the constituency, district, uh, regional, and national officers, but our principal focus is on the ward. Because as a commission, we are constituted to seek the interests of the ordinary membership of political parties. And it is only at that level, at that layer, of their organs mm -hmm. that the ordinary membership will participate in their internal election. So we are always interested in that one. She met mm -hmm. us when she sent us that letter. We call her to a meeting that you cannot do this. Mm -hmm. Go do the world, do your constituency, and then you move on to the district and the region. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ended well in that meeting. She went, and again, we got another invite asking us to attend a party conference for the district and the region. Again, we responded. You cannot do this. Do the word. Because the word executive election, when you conduct those, the people you will elect in that election, they are the electoral college for the constituency executive. Constituency executive becomes the electoral college for mm -hmm. the district. The district becomes the electoral college for the region. And then all of them put together, they go for the national delegate conference to elect their national officers. Mm -hmm. So we must have evidence of you doing those things. We agree that, I mean, you do not have the strength and number to do your ward election in all of the 446. But the same opportunity we gave 
to other smaller political parties. Well, the same thing we were advising her to do. Go do those world elections where you have presence. Mm -hmm. As long as we have a semblance of participation of the ordinary membership of your party, notwithstanding the area you do them, we are fine. I mean, we can move on from that point to constitute the other organs. This she never did. Was this that the only criterion she did not meet? No, no, no. As I speak to you, there are other criteria that are, she is supposed to comply with. Uh, audited financial statements, she's never, ever, since I took over office at the PPRC, she's never submitted that one to us. And the law says within the first three months of every year, every political party is supposed to submit to us their audited financial statement. And as I speak to you, she's not submitted uh, uh, asset and liability declaration to the commission. And the law is very clear on that as well. Mm -hmm. It says that uh, when a date for an election that a political party intends to participate in is announced, within 60 days of that announcement, you give to the commission your declaration of assets and liability. This goes towards political finance. As an oversight body, we are obligated to know where our political parties are getting their funds from and uh, the purpose for which those funds are given. I mean, and also how those funds are utilized. Mm. I mean, this is political finance. You have to be accountable to the membership of your party and the country as a whole. We don't want politicians to go accept contributions from unscrupulous business people in expectation of favors mm. or an advantage. So we are very keen on that. We will make sure that uh, when you receive any donation or contribution from anybody, it has to be without strings attached. At the end of the day, when you win power, they will want to, you to give them huge concessions, very big contracts for mm -hmm. them. We don't want that kind of thing. And we also do not want our parties to accept money from organized crime organizations like terrorist groups. We do not have that here for now, thankfully. But that does not mean that we are going to turn a blind eye to that. Mm -hmm. We have to monitor those. So this is why those provisions are made in the law, mm -hmm. so that we'll know where they get their money, who gave them that money, what they did with that money. Mm -hmm. There, 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 there is a letter in the public domain, and um, the letter is from the selling police mm -hmm. that, um, for, with, with the directives from the PPRC, mm -hmm. um, Femi Claudius called National Delegate Convention mm -hmm. at Grafton was stopped. What was the basis for that convention to be stopped? Since the appointment of the current Inspector General of Police, he's developed this very responsible uh, leadership practice mm. that uh, each time any of our political parties are uh, having any activity, we as an oversight body, he will write to us, are you aware of this particular activity this political party is getting? Mm -hmm. Are you aware, I mean, is it legitimate? Can I provide coverage? If we are aware, and it is fine, the party is fully in compliance, we'll reply back to say, yeah, we are aware, do your job. Mm -hmm. If we are not aware, we'll say that. If we are aware, as it was in Femi's case, but we had issues, we will definitely inform the police that we are aware, but uh, as far as we are concerned, we don't think this is a proper thing. Mm -hmm. There are issues that we have as a commission. Mm -hmm. She's not complied with the directives we've given them, and she's not complied with the law. And that was the response we gave to the police. Mm -hmm. We did not instruct the police to take any action. It's an independent institution. What they make of the information they get from us in our reply mm -hmm. is exclusively their discretion. It is not for the PPRC to tell the police, do this or don't do that. They ask us, we told them, yes, we are aware, but as a commission, we have issues and we are not attending. Mm -hmm. And the police use their discretion to withdraw. You did not sanction clearance. it? I did not sanction it. Mm -hmm. I have no business sanctioning it because it's an, uh, another institution. It's an, they have their own leadership. They take their own decisions. They sought for an information from me. I provided the information. What they make of that information is for them. Let, let, let's get to it. In 2018, Femi Claudio School was one of only two female presidential candidates mm -hmm. that um, contested for the presidency. Mm -hmm. And her party also was given the green light to contest. So what, what has happened since 2018 to now that her party did not meet any of the criteria to be able to contest um, the upcoming polls in June? In the first place, she registered at a period leading to 2018. So our purpose of registering at that time was for her to contest those elections. So I am sure that uh, as a new political party that was seeking to participate in that process, she must have been compliant with some of these requirements. Mm -hmm. And now since, for instance, she, her uh, executive was constituted in 2017. The political, I mean, the constitution of our party requires that uh, they are supposed to do 
internal elections every three years. So she had a mandate for three years. And since 2017, she's not done anything. She's not called an election. She's not gone to a national delegates conference. So meaning she's held over her office mm. for over three years because her mandate is supposed to have ended in 2020. Mm. From that time to now, we have not heard of any election until very recently when we had this to and fro with her. So which means she's overstayed her mandate and she's held over our office, and which in itself is unlawful. Mm. So we have not targeted her. And now we have a new political party, Act number 25 of 2022. Most of what we is contained in that act now in terms of granting the commission regulatory powers, mm. we did not have at that time. Mm. And so now that those powers are conferred on us, we are obligated, we are accountable to the public to ensure that we do the job that we are paid for. We cannot sit back and allow things that used to happen to continue to happen mm -hmm. when we did not have enforcement powers. And it was them, the political parties, that conferred those powers on us. Right from the validation conference we call at uh, Brookfield Hotel, they decided mm -hmm. to confer those powers on us. And the, the bill went to parliament. Parliament is constituted by political parties, aside from the few independents and maybe paramount chief agency representatives. But the rest are from political parties. So we have the, 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 the well, not enviable uh, fit mm -hmm. of our mandate being determined by the people that we are supposed to regulate. Mm -hmm. Let, let me take you to um, away from the political parties that did not meet to so another crucial um, um, area in this critical period. We, we've seen in other countries where state capture is becoming a normal thing. The issue of campaign financing. How does the commission plan to track and monitor campaign financing so that institutions, businesses do not capture the state of Sierra Leone by financing political parties? I must admit that uh, we have capacity issue when it comes to political finance. Mm. But uh, in view of those capacity issues, that was why the new political act, political parties act, is now made us a five-member uh, commission. Mm. We used to be a four-member commission. But now they've brought in another commissioner mm -hmm. who should be a nominee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Right. I mean, the intendment there is to get somebody that will assist us with political finance. And also what we have done, we are forging some understanding with FIU. Mm. That is the institution that has the responsibility. The Financial to, Intelligence uh, Unit. Intelligence unit. Mm. So that they can also help us in that respect. We are to sign a memorandum of understanding. But yes, there are challenges because uh, it is not all of those donations that will come through the official way. Right. And uh, we, as a commission, we can only have access to those official channels. And uh, we will continue to do what we can. Mm. to ensure that we monitor that aspect. But as I said, yes, there is capacity, I mean issue, and also the compliance rate of our political parties, because they are aware of these provisions, they do not go normally through the official channel, I mean to receive contributions from their sympathizers and supporters. But we'll continue to monitor and we'll also continue to seek the assistance of not mm. only FIU, but even the press, to help us with information that will point towards anything that is uh, geared towards mortgage in this country. Let, let's, let's talk about um, something crucial. Ban on political rallies. Some of the parties, especially the main opposition APC party, has raised concerns, saying, oh, they, they, this kills democracy because democracy presupposes the free space to assemble, the free space to express one's um, opinion and all of that. So what was the basis and how did we as a nation arrive at that decision of um, putting a ban on political rallies? We have not actually put a ban on political rallies. Mm. What we have decided to mm -hmm. maybe audit is the procession of party supporters mm -hmm. commuting to and from designated areas that their political parties have always rallied. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of coming to that decision, the new political party, as I said, is conferred a lot of powers on us. All of those enforcement powers we did not have then, we now have. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a commission, we have a responsibility to make sure that we execute our mandate to the satisfaction of those whose monies are being used to pay us, mm -hmm. the ordinary person. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we had those powers, I invoked those powers against the APC and the SLPP. In some instances, we had they misconducted themselves. 
And when that invocation was done, I noticed that there were a lot of grumblings from both political parties. They did not like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were kind of saying that uh, we were a little bit high-handed. But we acted within the law. But because I do not want to lose their goodwill, I called them to a dialogue launch. You confer these powers on us. In time past, we used to have a very convenient excuse that we do not have powers. When you misbehave and the public complain, mm -hmm. we always explain to them that we do not have powers. Mm -hmm. Now you have conferred that, uh, those powers on us, we no longer have that excuse. We need to act when you misbehave. And since you confer this power to me, on us, that is why we thought that uh, we needed to invoke them when you misconduct yourself. Now you are grumbling. Help us. How do you think that we can go about the enforcement of the new act without the commission losing the goodwill of the political parties that we have always enjoyed? I mean, in that dialogue launch, we agreed on a number of things. One, they promised to help us weed out every riffraff that will join their activities and hand them over to the police. They also promised to contain them not to uh, act against our moral and cultural values. And then one thing that relates to the commission, they asked me to be consultative. Each time one of them would transgress against the act, before I come down with the armor, they asked me to be consultative. Mm. And uh, I made a promise to them that I'll try to do that. And on the basis of that promise, on the 27th of March, I called a meeting. I said, now let us come and hang it. We all know what used to happen in this country. In fact, that was one of the reasons why the election of Zaba, observers that came in 2018, recommended the strengthening of our mandate. Because when they came, the manner in which some of you were conducting your campaigns, you were causing a lot of distress to the public. Mm -hmm. People did not like that. When you are out, children don't go to school. When you are out, the market woman does not go to the market to fend for the family. And we live in a subsistence economy. 80% of the families in this country, they need to go to the market every day. They need to go out every day to fend for their families to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. And if you come out and you encumber the street, you ward off these people from where they go to fend for their living, mm -hmm. I don't think it is right. What do we do? Now we have powers that we did not have before. Most of those conducts we are perpetrating, they are now proscribed in the new act. And there are sanctions that are prescribed. Help us. How do you think that we can enforce this? I mean, so we all agreed in that meeting. Just before you get mm -hmm. um, us to the outcome of those deliberations, mm -hmm. let's quickly go for this break. We'll be right okay. back. Welcome back. This is the Sale on the Sides 2023 series, where we bring those who are um, said to be the umpires, those who are said to be the major players within the electoral landscape as the nation heads to its date with destiny. That's June 24th. I have the chairman for the Political Parties Regulation Commission, lawyer Abdullah Bangura, here with me. Now, um, we were talking about how did the commission and the political parties arrive at the ban or possession mm -hmm. of um, ra political rallies. Mm -hmm. And you've um, gone through how you call a con uh, consultative meeting. Yes. So what really happened during the consultation? So in that consultative meeting, as I was saying, I put the issue to them, the issue of street rallies, I mean, that they were having that we are distressing the public. And uh, let me make this clear. Mm -hmm. We will have done that by way of an Ill, a, a regulatory uh, uh, decision mm -hmm. without consulting them. But because I made a promise to them that I will be consultative in the evocation of our powers, I chose to call them. And in that meeting, every political party that was in attendance in that meeting agreed that we should put on hold the street rallies and uh, encourage our supporters to be going to and coming from the designated areas political parties will be campaigning in smaller numbers. Does that include uh, the APC? The APC was there and uh, they were represented by the Secretary General of that party with two very senior members of that party, Dr. Richard Conte and Marie Tambaka. They were there mm. and these are gentlemen of credit. I mean, I would want you to cross-check it with them because I've had the APC Secretary General severally mm -hmm. given an interview on this issue, but it's never actually categorically said that uh, they did not agree. Mm -hmm. He's threatened to resist any attempt at arresting their supporters when they are going to their activities, mm -hmm. but it's never said because he knows that I have his clip. And if he comes out definitively and say he did not agree, I will have published that clip. But because he's not said so in so many words, that is why I chose to continue to respect him and not to publish that clip. But yes, they agreed. Mm. All of them agreed. The APC and the SLPP, they had issues. Which were? And the issues they raised were that, now that we have agreed on this, we want the commission to assure us 
that when our people will be commuting and com I mean to and from our designated areas, they will not be unduly harassed by the security sector. I said, okay, I think what we should do on this, I promise them that we'll do some guidelines that will help to guide the political party as to how we we'll want them help us to get their supporters to conduct themselves while they are going to these designated areas. So we agreed on that one, and in keeping with that agreement, I came, we drew up those guidelines, and those guidelines were signed by me, I mean, as chairman of the political parties, Regulation Commission, the mm -hmm. CEC, the ONS coordinator, and uh, the Inspector General of Police, and NACID. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we have given those guidelines to them, and all of that is in an effort to encourage them to help us. Mm -hmm. And I have made it clear to them that uh, the PPRC has not provided a solution. What the PPRC has done is to offer a solution. And for that solution to be effectual, we need the goodwill of everybody in the political landscape. And we, I could have sat down and allowed them to do things as they used to do. And then when they misconduct themselves, I come after them by way of sanctioning them as prescribed for in the new act. But I chose not to do that because I want to be consultative in everything I do. Mm. So we are continuing to ask people. We as an oversight body, let us even assume without conceding mm -hmm. that the APC did not agree. But all of the other political parties agreed. Mm. I mean, APC is supposed to go by that agreement. Mm. But in this case, they did agree. So what I will encourage any political party that will have issues with the commission in terms of decision we have taken, I mean, take us to the appropriate authority and challenge our actions that we have either acted outside our mandate or we have acted, I mean, ultra-varies that mandate. When you do that, the courts are given the authority to search our conduct. Mm. We are an institution created by law. We are not above the law. Mm. If you think we've done anything that you think is a violation of your rights, definitely you have the right to challenge us in court. And the court, if they see that uh, we've acted outside the mandate of our responsibility, they will definitely make an order. But the right you do not have is to become confrontational on the decision of the oversight body. I mean, that is lawlessness, and I will encourage all of my political parties not to do that. Mm. We all have a responsibility to keep the peace in this country, and let us all... In fact, when we made that decision, some human rights uh, lawyers mm. were threatening to go to court. And I was actually looking forward to seeing them in court. Mm. Because definitely, when I act in any, I mean, any way in that commission, I will always want to be searched. Let, let, let's quickly get to talk. Um, mm -hmm. Information reaching us confirm whether or not this is true, that the presidential candidate of the All People's Congress Party has been petitioned. Have you received any petition? I have not officially received any petition, but like you, I saw that on the social media that uh, I think it's Paul Kamara and Cole Sinture mm -hmm. that they have petitioned the, 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 the presidential candidate for the APC. But uh, I have not received, I've not been served, because definitely if right. they do, I will be served. And until I am officially served, I cannot say definitively that is what has happened. Okay. What I have seen is on social media, and I'll wait until I get the official correspondent respecting that issue. Constitutionally and according to even the Political Parties um, Regulation Act, political parties are formed to shape the political will of the people mm -hmm. and um, to advance the socioeconomic needs of mm -hmm. Sierra Leoneans. Now... Going by those dictates, are the political parties of Sierra Leone complying with all of these, putting um, foremost the interest of Sierra Leoneans as they seek their political interests? I think we still have challenge in that respect for most of the political parties, and uh, this is something that is very, very worrying. And I think that uh, as leaders, they will try to demonstrate leadership in everything they do mm. and in everything they fail to do. It should always be geared towards the interests of this country. I mean, uh, in all of the engagements I've had with them after the Nigerian elections, I've always cited the example of Peter Obi. Mm. Those of us who are following those uh, elections, mm -hmm. we knew the kind of uh, promise he had in terms of uh, winning those elections. But when the results came out otherwise, it did not take to the media to insult state institutions. It did not take to the media to insult state officials. Mm. He has not said anything that is insightful. He never stoked any violence from his supporters. He came, he complained about the results in a very decent fashion, 
And I think the strongest word he used in his statement is that these elections will go down in the history of Nigeria as the most controversial one. He did not insult their electoral commission there. He did not insult other. I mean, so when you begin to be utterly disrespectful to state institutions, that is where the problem starts. I mean, we are put there by law. And definitely, I don't think if you are opportune to occupy those offices at some point, you will want to be unnecessarily targeted by some of the hostility that we have suffered. But yes, it comes with the territory, and we are trying to manage the animosity. As long as we know we are acting within the mandate that is given us. But uh, politicians should be mindful of what they say in public, and they should display I mean, uh, leadership, and leadership is about self-restraint and uh, is about selflessness. In 2018, just as we try to, to round off this conversation, in 2018, the Citizens Democratic Party, CDP, when it was formed, I mean, around um, the principles of religion, and we, we, we saw where um, preachings were ongoing about Allah is one, uh, a party that was said was just advancing the cause of a single religion which was going to sow a table um, discord between and among Sierra Leoneans. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you tracking some of these activities, utterances of politicians in public, and to call them to order in the, in the name of peace, unity, and national cohesion as we are to the June polls? Yes, we are doing what we can, and as I said, when politicians put their personal ambitions and interests above the country, then you will have problems. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that uh, I was not in office then, but uh, when that... Uh, party had that slogan, Allah is one. Yes. I mean, there was a huge hue and cry from mm -hmm. members of the public for obvious reasons. We have a political tolerance here, and I think that is one of the biggest gains we have in this country. You will see a Christian getting married to a Muslim, and they live amicably well in that marriage. Mm -hmm. And we think we want to continue in that trajectory. So we will not encourage any of our political leaders mm -hmm. to peddle religious hate and uh, religious differences. We don't want that in this country. So we'll continue to monitor the political landscape. As I said, uh, there are times when people, at the time they acted, they were in their personal capacities. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had the incident of uh, uh, the, the, the Dr. Samura in Makeni. We had the other issue that was complained about by Gento. Mm -hmm. But at the time those people made those statements, they are just individuals. Right. And as a commission, we are constituted to go after political parties and their leadership. Okay. We cannot go against individuals. At the time Dr. Samura made those statements in Makini, he was not flag bearer of the APC. He was aspiring to be. So he was just Dr. Samura. Mm. At the time Gento made this statement, I mean, in the mocks people were complaining about, mm -hmm. he was not the mayoral candidate of the SLPP. He was aspiring to. And therefore, we did not have any entry point mm. to call them to order. But again, we will just continue to appeal. Let us put the country first and let us make sure that all of us work towards the maintenance of the peace. This is an election. At the end of the day, whoever wins, I mean, we'll have the mandate of the people to govern right. us. Thank you very much, Lawyer Bangu. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. All right, and there you have it um, from the um, chairman of the Political Parties Regulation Commission, Lawyer Abdullah Bangura, about happenings, activities in the political landscape, especially around and about political parties. This is SL Decides 2023 series. Until then, take care of yourself. My name is Samuel Wise Bangura. <laughs>